Hey everyone, what is going on? So we have another showcase in the Great League for you today, taking a look at both Nido King and Nido Queen. So Nido Queen got a really amazing buff last season, and Nido King got one this season. So it does get access, or it does have access to Santum, I should say, which is a good bait move for Nido King. Nido King definitely needed one. Plus, Megahorn does more damage if you choose to run that move. Of course, it also has Earth Power, which is a move you could run as well. And this trainer is currently running Fury Cutter, which is a legacy move. If you happen to have Fury Cutter, definitely want to stick with it because you don't want to TM away Fury Cutter for Poison Jab. I mean, if you happen to want to use Poison Jab, build another Needle King because, it's, as I said, it's not a bad move and it's a legacy one. So definitely a, a solid uh, Pokemon. And would you prefer Fury Cutter or Poison Jab? Let me know in the comments down below. But I feel like Poison Jab, but, you know, Fury Cutter is still good and I'm definitely excited to see these battles. Uh, we talked about Needle Queen we also have Jellicent. So of course, both Needle King and Needle Queen are poison types, so they are weak to confusion users like Hypno. So Jellicent does answer Hypno re relatively well. Of course, it's weak to Thunder Punch. It's weak to Shadow Ball if Hypno has it. Uh, most of them carry Thunder Punch. But uh, nonetheless, I mean, Jellicent can still have a lot of play against Hypno with Shadow Ball and things like that. Uh, but anyway, I'm excited to see how these games play out. We've been talking quite a bit. Let's go ahead and dive right into the commentary. Nido Queen is going to get KO'd by this Aerial Ace. Uh, so totally fine. Let's see what decides to come in. The opponent still has two shields. Uh, it looks like Nido King is coming in. Okay, so... Um, I was gonna say, uh, okay, let's see. So, I'm gonna go ahead and take this. Needle King cannot farm down at this range. Shadow Ball does a lot of damage. Uh, so unfortunately, can't farm down. We're gonna see a Santum. Maybe Santum farm down and then have a lot of energy. We'll see. I feel like Mandibuzz gets to another move though. Oh, they actually shield it. Alright, so that's good. At least they shield it. Will the Needle King shield? Maybe shield farm down? Uh, or let it go? It looks like they are gonna go ahead and, and shield it. And we see a Deoxys coming in. So Deoxys is weak to Megahorn. Megahorn is doing more damage now than it did before this season. So it's going to be doing even more. And in comes Jellicent. Jellicent definitely going for that farm down. Uh, even if this is a Thunderbolt, it doesn't matter. It will do a pretty good amount of damage, but Jellicent can still take it. Uh, so there we go. Able to farm down that defense Deoxys. You'll have to see it. Bubble Beam going into Mandibuzz. Uh, so this is going to get the shield. I mean, it has to at that point. So nice bubble beam. Uh, able to get to another bubble beam. I actually don't know if this KOs Mandibus. Mandibus is so tanky. It doesn't matter if it doesn't KO. This is still going to be a good game. It actually didn't KO. So Mandibus does get to another attack. Uh, and it's going to be Shadow Ball. But uh, that does KO. Yep. But then Needle King can from down with Fury Cutter. So great game. Well played. Able to take that one. Uh, but yeah, the king and the queen battling it out together. You'll love to see it. Let's go ahead and move into the next battle. These are also, we also have seven battles for you. So we don't have like a full set. We have more than a set. We don't have two full sets submitted, uh, which is totally fine. I don't know if these were pulled from the same set or same couple of sets. Maybe, maybe not. But either way, going up against Galarian Stunfisk. Very interesting. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, Santum is going to be super effective, but it's really not going to do too much damage. Uh, and plus, like, it, it does debuff it, but Fury Cut is still not doing a lot to Galarian Stunfisk. And Earthquake will KO the Needle King, so definitely, definitely uh, not the greatest situation. We're going to see another Sandtomb in just a moment. Uh, so again, going to debuff it even further, and uh, which will add up. But, you know, I mean, they're still going to make it to another Earthquake, but they actually switch out into a Zoomel. So in comes Needle Queen. The only thing is this Azumel does get to Ice Beam super fast, so uh, it's already at the Ice Beam, Needle King, or oh, Needle Queen is going to shield it up and go for the Poison Fang. Um, I don't think it's the best idea to farm up extra energy when you plan on going for Poison Fang anyway, unless if you're baiting, and they know that it's not going to be a bait, only because the Poison Jabs will be doing more damage after the Poison Fang lands. But that's totally fine. We do see a shield there. And this Azumel will get off the Ice Beam. Unfortunately, Needle Queen cannot shield because they are out of shields. So Ice Beam will be enough to KO. Uh, farm down. Uh, let's see. Jellicent going for the farm. They switch into Galarian Stunfisk. So Galarian Stunfisk will be hit with a Bubble Beam. Although it's not enough to KO. But it's still going to be super effective. It almost KOs, to be honest. And they do go for an attack. Earthquake is debuffed. It wouldn't have KO'd anyway, but it will be doing a pretty good amount of damage. And then you just farm down with the Jellicent. So very nice farm. The only thing is the opponent still has a shield left, which is kind of scary, but I guess we'll see. Uh, so in comes... Ooh, Cresselia is coming in, going for the Bubble Beam Bait. 
If they get the shield here, this is going to be huge. Will the opponent decide to shield or will they call the bait? They shield it. Very nice shield bait. Oh, the grass not coming in. But will this be enough after the debuff to KO Jellicent? Oh, he KOs it. Definitely unfortunate. Uh, Needle King is going to be able to get to a Mega Horn, which is good. It's super effective. It does a lot. But, uh, you know, it's not going to KO. And then Cresselia actually... Oh, wait. Hold up. They actually switch into Azumel. Okay, going to go for the Sand Tomb. Afraid they couldn't farm down in time, which is probably, unfortunately, the case. Uh, so that's going to KO. And then Cresselia will come in and throw the Grass Knight, which will KO the Needle King. And uh, this Cresselia... So there we go. Grass Knight coming out. It does KO it. And, oh man, if they went for the Bubble Beam, they had the Bubble Beam, they were trying to get to the Shadow Ball. So that was a back and forth game, that was very close, very well played to both trainers, unfortunately. I felt like once they switched into the Azumel, if that Needle King was able to farm down, the Needle King would have won. But unfortunately, they were not able to farm down, they had to throw the Sand Tomb. But going up against Golbat, okay, this is not a good matchup, of course. All these moves are heavily resisted by Golbat, double resisted. So, uh, Golbat is going to have a field day here, you definitely have to switch out if you're the Needle King. Uh, so we're going to see a Poison Fang, um, and that's fine. Uh, looks like they, the Golbat actually switches out. Okay, M that's very interesting. Maybe, unless if you're not familiar with Needle King's movesets, which may be the case, but Golbat does have a good matchup against Needle King. Uh, in comes Needle Queen. Golbat also has a good matchup against Needle Queen because the Shadow Balls are just neutral, and so is the fast attack from Golbat. Uh, so we're going to see a Poison Fang. And that's fine. And we're going to see a farm down. Yeah, able to get that farm down before an attack comes in. That is huge. I thought they were going to get off an attack. Hypno's coming in. So we spoke about Hypno earlier. But Needle Queen did its job already. Plus, it's going to be able to get off these Poison Fang attacks. So uh, Poison Fang doing decent amount of damage. Able to get off another one. Uh, Confusion is a slow move. So it's going to be able to get this off. And that will get the shield. <laughs> getting the shield and doing a lot of damage to that Hypno. You'll love to see it. Uh, probably bringing in the Jellicent. Yeah, Jellicent is coming in. And going for, definitely going for the farm down now. As I said, Shadow Ball is a threat. Thunder Punch is a threat too. Yeah, shielding the first one just in case it was a Shadow Ball. But this one is definitely a Thunder Punch. So Jellicent can take it. It will still do a pretty good amount of damage. That's the Shadow Hypno. But I'm going to be able to take it. They do switch into Golbat. So Golbat will be going for an attack. But I think this is only Poison Fang. So I don't think you have to shield it yet. Uh, so Poison Fang coming in. And going for the Bubble Beam bait, will the Golbat shield it? They have to shield, don't they? Let's see. So the Bubble Beam coming out. They do shield it. Very nice. And in comes Needle King. Going for the Mega Horn. I wouldn't have switched into Needle King. I would have went for a Shadow Ball with Jellicent. Because again, these moves are resisted. So they're really not doing too much. Uh, but I still think this is going to be a good game. They're throwing an attack. Um, Shadow Ball KOs. Poison Fang will not. It's a Poison Fang. I, I would have almost hoped that they KO'd. Not almost. I would have hoped that they KO'd Needle King so I could bring back in the Jellicent. The Jellicent, um, yeah. Okay, so, okay, I mean, continuing to debuff it, which is nice. So now you probably just go for, uh, Bubble Beam. This is a very close game. Uh, so Jellicent is gonna go ahead and shield this one up. Gonna be a Poison Fang. And we're gonna see a Bubble Beam, which will be enough to KO, I think. Is the Hypno going to... Wait, how low is the Hypno? So Bubble Beam KOs. It, keep in mind it was double debuffed. Hypno is so low. Able to get off the Bubble Beam and take that game. Wow. That, that could have went either way. That Hypno luckily did not have any move. But Bubble Beam is able to KO the Shadow Hypno and take that game. So well played. Um, yeah. But uh, definitely definitely a tough one. That Golbat was, is definitely tough for both Needle King and Needle Queen. So uh, able to win that one. Very nice. And it looks like that was one set where they went 3-2. And we're moving on to uh, another another game. Okay, so as I said, we have seven games for you. Um, so we'll see how uh, the next one plays out. Maybe deciding that team. Um, maybe switching orders. I don't know. But either way, that's totally fine. Okay, it looks like Nido Queen is going to be in the lead this time, which is fine. We'll see how it plays out. Um, okay, here we go. So it's going to be uh, Shiny Nido Queen into Universe Stunfisk. Okay. Um, okay, so they both are weak to ground attacks, right? We're gonna see a mud bomb come in now. Needle Queen can definitely take it, so there's no need to shield the first one, uh, but the next one I can't take. Uh, so let's see if they. Oh, they actually get it off. So Needle Queen is gonna go ahead and shield. Yeah, but the thing is, the Stun Fist can take an Earth Power, right? Stun Fist is pretty bulky, so I'm pretty sure it takes an Earth Power. However, we're gonna see a bait. We're gonna see a bait. Let's see. This is gonna be huge. Oh, they shielded. That is huge. So now Needle Queen gets off that Earth Power. So now that they're debuffed, they might not be able to take this. So we'll see. So we're going to see Earth Power. We do see a shield. That shield makes sense. 
Probably just let the Needle Queen go, yeah, because you can't make it to another Earth Power. There's no point in shielding it. So just gonna let it go. Oh, it doesn't KO. They actually underfund it. Switching into Jellicent. Um, Jellicent is weak to uh, Discharge, but that is okay. It actually does a lot well. Stunfist definitely causing a lot of problems here. So we're gonna see a Shadow Ball come out. Hopefully, this is enough to KO. They are debuffed, so it probably is. Yeah. No, actually, one more Hex. That's technically better for Jellicent. But, okay, let's see what's in the back. The Stunfist did not switch out, so maybe they don't have a great answer. Okay, Skarmie. Um, That's not a, a hard answer to Jellicent. Although, I wonder if they try to farm down. We're going to see a Shadow Ball. It's not going to KO. It's going to do a lot. I don't think they can get the farm, can they? Oh, it's going to be tight. Maybe they can. Yeah, they could have before the Shadow Ball. So, you have to go for the Bubble Beam. But at least you're going to be able to debuff this Skarmie. So, uh, we might see a switch. But we'll see. Needle King is coming in. I don't know. This is this could probably be a Brave Bird. They, they might Brave Bird. Oh, no. It's a Sky Attack. Definitely unfortunate. But in comes Mew. Get to that Mega Horn, please. They're not going to go for Wild Charge. If they have Surf, I think they can only get to one and it doesn't KO. So, oh my gosh. It almost KOs. Um, so, it coming out is this Mega Horn. This has got to explode that Mew. That Mew has got to leave this dimension immediately. Goodbye, Mew. And now in comes Skarmory, and even without the debuff this season, I think that would have uh, still KO'd Mew. So still, unfortunately, it's a loss, but hey, that was a great game. They actually go for the Brave Bird. Um, why not? You might as well if you have it. Uh, so still a loss, but that was awesome seeing that Mew go down to one Mega One. Mega One is a really powerful move now. It was still a powerful move even before, but it's just better now, you know? Okay, let's go ahead and move into the next game, see how the next game plays out. Um, okay, so let's see. She's using Needle Queen to start off against Victor Bell. Okay, pretty good matchup. Of course, you're taking neutral damage, but you're also dishing out super effective damage, plus debuffing them. They do pull a nice switch, but that's into an Azumo. So that's actually fine for the Needle Queen. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd be totally down with this. Um, and maybe they actually they actually make it to a second one because Needle Queen was ahead on energy. So just going to be able to make it to a second one, totally fine. Um, and switching right now because they don't want to be hit with an Ice Beam. And saving that Needle Queen for the Victory Bell later. It makes a lot of sense. That was a good switch. Ice Beam coming in. Now if you have the Jellicent, you just farm down. Um, yeah, just go for the farm. Even if they got to another move, so what? But they didn't. In comes Victory Bell. Victory Bell is weak to Ice Beam. Uh, I do a Bubble Beam on the overlay. I guess they switched moves, which is fine. Um... Okay, so they do switch, and it looks like we're seeing some lag. Oh, okay, they throw an attack. Jellicent could not ma have made it to another move, but I guess uh, they were afraid that they could have, which makes sense. So I'm going to go ahead and throw it, uh, bring in Needle Queen, and do as much damage as possible. And then Needle King? Yeah, let's see. Trying to get to the Poison Fang. Unfortunately, you can't get that, but yeah, you had to do as much damage as possible. Going to farm down with the Needle King. So Needle King does have some energy. We do see a Bash Shield on. This is amazing. Going to go ahead and go for the Sand Tomb. Unfortunately, doesn't have... Uh, a stronger move, but at the end of the day, this should still be fine because the Sand Tombs are doing um, more and more damage with, with each one you use, right? Uh, I know the Fury Cutter is technically on too, but Fury Cutter looks like it's literally doing nothing. And Needle King still has two shields, and they're not going to be able to farm down with Bastion Dot. So this is going to be a good game. Um, yeah. So this has to be shielded, but then Needle King can still get to another one. And even if it couldn't, it still has a shield. So this is going to be a good game. Um, so, yep. I'm sure a lot of people probably love seeing Bash Yudan go down like this. But yeah, we do see another Sand Tomb. I think this one KOs, but even if it doesn't... Um, it did, okay. So I think the Fury Cutters could have gotten it. Crazy enough. But anyway, well played. Yeah, really played that one great. I like that game. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and move into the next battle and see how the next battle goes for us. Let's see if they're still leading with the Needle Queen. Um, so it's going to be... Yep, Needle Queen into Moltres, so I love it, I love it, shiny Moltres, beautiful shiny, um, yeah, I mean, you just stay, and look how much Moltres is taking, the Poison Fang is definitely going to add up, Moltres, super squishy in the Great League, we're going to see a Poison Fang right now, and, uh, if you're the Needle, oh, they switch, I was going to say, if you're the Needle Queen, you probably shield from down, but they actually switch, so I'm going to go ahead and go for, uh, the Earth Power, and I think that's Bullet Punch, right, yeah, that's Bullet, that's not counted, so switching in to Jellicent, now, the scary part about this is Shadow Ball, of course. Uh, so we do see a shield. It's actually close combat. Okay. Okay, so maybe they don't have Shadow Ball, which is huge. So I probably wouldn't even shield this. If they're going for close combat, they definitely don't have Shadow Ball. 
Uh, so another close combat. Could be single moved on the Lucario. Um, I guess they're going for the... No, not going for the farm. Going for the Ice Beam. Okay. Um, Shadow Ball would have been the way to go there, but it, they're both are going to KO, so it doesn't matter. The only reason I would have went for Shadow Ball in that situation is because I wouldn't have wanted it to reveal that I had Ice Beam just yet. Uh, just because they could still think I have Bubble Beam. Uh, but that's okay. So Ice Beam is going to get the shield very nice. Um, okay, going to go ahead and bring in Nido King. Okay, I mean, yeah, one Mega Horn definitely KOs. Uh, this is not a Shadow, don't forget. This is not a Shadow Victor Bell. So we're going to shield that Leaf Blade. Uh, so the damage is not as much, although it's still doing a lot. Mega Horn, definitely going to be enough to KO. I'd be surprised if this doesn't KO. Although it's not a Shadow, but still, it does KO. And in comes Moltres. Yeah, this is definitely going to be a good game. Uh, able to get to that Sand Tomb, and that is going to be a good game. Even if Sand Tomb doesn't... I mean, it's resisted, so it might not KO. Um, it does. Okay, so yeah, Moltres is so squishy in the Great League, but the Shiny is absolutely beautiful, though. Uh, so great win, well played, and she's moving on to the final game right now. Let's give it up for this powerful trainer, and we'll see uh, how she does in the final game of the video. Thank you so much for sharing your battle experiences with us. I really do appreciate it. Needle Queen into Bash Yodan, you absolutely love to see it. Um, yeah, this is definitely a great matchup, because, uh, yeah, I mean, just go for... Yeah, this, okay, gonna go ahead and go for the bait. I was about to say there's no reason to bait, but, um, I mean, if you want to go for the bait, that's fine. Uh, actually picking up a shield. Wow, I did not expect the shield. Okay, hey, good bait. You know, I learned something. I wouldn't have baited that, but that that worked out great. You know, now that now Earth Power does even more damage if you land it. However, they switch in Sableye. Out comes Nido King. Um, okay, gonna go ahead and go for the Sand Tomb. I would have been tempted to go for Mega Horn. They only have one shield, but let's see. Um, okay, getting that to the defense drop, which is a guaranteed. Um, so we're going to see a foul play come out, and that's going to do a tremendous amount to Nido King. They're going to go for the farm down, wanting to get to one more, unfortunately not able to make it. Um, so that's definitely unfortunate. But let's see. Uh, what is going to come in? Going to be Nido Queen. Going to go ahead and go for the Poison Fang. This is not going to KO, but it maybe puts in farm down range. Um, no, they actually have an attack. So, oh, Nido Queen just going to go ahead and take it. And this is going to be a tough one. Um, okay, gonna go ahead and go for the farm. No, I'm not gonna go for the farm because afraid Sableye might have been able to farm them down first, which makes sense. So that's gonna KO Sableye. And in comes Bash Yodan, out comes Jellicent, switching out to Jellicent immediately. What is in the back? Um, okay, this is an interesting matchup. Bash Yodan, I think, generally wins this. Um, but maybe it depends on shield because Shadow Ball's not gonna KO. Oh, going for the Ice Beam. Uh, you, de you definitely want to go for Shadow Ball here because Ice Beam is going to be resisted and Shadow Ball is not, but that's fine. Uh, we're going to see the Shadow Ball. It's okay. I mean, we all make mistakes. So Shadow Ball coming out and one more Shadow Ball will KO, but they still have a shield and they're going to be able to get to like a Stone Edge, which is this attack is going to be a Stone Edge. Uh, so it doesn't KO, but like another Smackdown roll, they do switch into Needle Queen. Out comes Metacham. And here comes the Poison Fang, but this is going to be a good game, yeah. There's no there's no win condition at this point in time, but that is okay. Um, yeah, that's fine. So anyway, great games, well played. Thank you so much for submitting them again, and I'll see everyone in the next one. Have a good day, guys. Bye.